So this is for chapter three. This is the fourth video, solving simple equations. I've actually combined two sections together. So it goes with three, three and three, four in the book. So there's a lot of more examples and practice and notes if you're looking for it on those pages. So in this section, we're going to be able to set up and write, but then mostly solve simple equations involving any of the operations. I think three, three is um, equations with adding and subtracting. Three, four is equations with multiplying and dividing, but we use the same same steps, the same uh, strategies for both. So we're going to do them all together. So for our vocab, the first one is equivalent equations. And we know what equivalent means. It just means that they're equal, equal value. So equivalent equations just means two equations that have the same solution. They have the same answer. So I've given you an example of two equivalent equations. 2x equals 10 is the first one. And an equation that's equivalent to that would be 4x equals 20. Because you can see that if I plug 5 in here, 2 times 5 is 10. I can put the same solution in here, 4 times 5 is 20. So that's two different equations, but the same solution. So the reason that's important is because we are going to be using these four properties. The addition property of equality, the subtraction property of equality, the multiplication property of equality, and the division property of equality to create uh, equivalent equations. Let's see how that works. So if I start with just the addition property of equality, that tells me that I can add the same thing to both sides of an equation, and it's going to give me another version, an equivalent equation, that would still have the same solution. We can go through all of these. Subtraction property of equality means I can subtract the same thing to both sides of an equation, or multiply the same thing on both sides, or divide the same thing on both sides. And all of these will give me another equation that still equal, equivalent to the one I started with. So you'll see how this works. We're going to use this idea to help us solve equations in this section. If you just write them down now, we'll go to examples where we actually use this. So we want to talk about a few other th important things first before we actually start solving. Whenever we go to solve equations, the we're always going to have the same goal. And that goal is to get the variable or isolate the variable and get it by itself. So isolate is the kind of technical word. When you isolate something, it means to get it by itself. So we want the variable all by itself. So in an example, if I start with this equation, negative 3x plus 14 equals 65, I want to work down until I get the variable all alone. That means this is going to be my solution. So the goal is always to work until the x or whatever variable is by itself. We have a tool to help us do that. The tool that we use is inverse operations. Inverse operations means kind of like the backwards version of the operations. So our four operations are add, subtract, multiply, and divide. When you see those operations in an equation, now you're going to use the inverse operation to cancel it out. So inverse operations, write this down as part of the tool. It means to do the opposite to cancel things out. So let's do some examples of inverses. What's the inverse operation of adding 5? Well, the inverse to adding would be to subtract 5. What's the inverse operation of subtracting 8? Well, that would be to add 8. You're doing kind of the opposite in order to cancel it out. The inverse of multiplying by negative 3 would be to divide by negative 3. Inverse of dividing by negative 6 would be to multiply by negative 6. Inverse of multiplying by 4, sorry, it's cut off, is to divide by 4. So you just have to think about the inverse operation. The numbers stay the same. Like here, if I was multiplying by negative 3, I'm still dividing by negative 3. It's just that I'm doing the opposite operation, the inverse operation. And as we solve equations, we have to follow this golden rule. The golden rule says things have to stay balanced, right? Think back to um, an equation with an equal sign in the middle. If I add 5 to this side, the addition property of equality says I have to do the same thing to both sides in order to get an equivalent equation. So I'd have to add 5 to both sides. If I multiply by 2 on this side, I'd have to multiply by 2 on this side to keep it balanced, right? Think of a scale. If you add weight to one side, you have to add the same amount to weight to the other side for it to still be balanced. So the golden rule means things have to stay balanced, but write this down, please, as part of the golden rule. 
whatever you do to one side of the equation, you have to do to the other side. Right? Those are your properties of equality. You've got to do the same thing to both sides if it's going to stay an equivalent equation. So now let's talk about um, the order to do things in. When we were just evaluating or simplifying or working things out to find an answer, we followed order of operations. And that was PEMDAS, right? Parentheses, exponents, multiplication and division together from left to right and adding and subtracting together from left to right. That's the order you do if you're just trying to evaluate and get an answer. But now we're not doing that. We're working backwards and solving an equation to figure out what a variable is. So we have to do PEMDAS backwards. So instead of starting with parentheses, that's going to be my last step. Now we do any adding and subtracting first, then any multiplying and dividing, then we cancel out any exponents, then we get rid of parentheses. So I call it this. Instead of saying PEMDAS, I just say it in reverse and I call it SADMEP. So it's a made up word. You might not find this if you Google it or talk to someone else. But when you hear me say SADMEP, that's PEMDAS backwards. It means we do it in the reverse order. So to recap, these are the huge big ideas with solving equations. The goal is to isolate the variable, get the variable by itself. The tool is inverse operations, right, to cancel things out. And instead of doing PEMDAS, we follow SADMEP. We do it in the backwards order because we're working back to cancel things out. And then the golden rule, everything has to stay balanced. Whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other side. So make sure you've got all that written down, and then we'll talk about how to show our work. So when you show your work, there's going to be seven things that I look for and seven things that I do in all my examples and that I should see on your paper. And it doesn't matter if it's so easy and you can figure it out in your head. We still show this much work for every single problem. Number one, draw a line down the equal sign. So when you set up your equation like this, there should be a line down the equal sign. Show every step of work on both sides. We already said if you do something to one side, you got to do the same thing to the other side. So we're going to show that work on both sides. Actually cross out what cancels. We're using inverse operations to cancel things out. So you need to actually cross it out when it's supposed to cancel and go away so that you know it's dropped out. Always work down, not across. We used to do math problems like 2 plus 7 equals 9, and we would work this way across the paper. We're not going to do that anymore. We're only going to work straight down. Rewrite the problem after every step. That means each step gets its own line. Some of these, by the end of the chapter, will take up three, four, or five lines of work. That's okay. It, every step gets its own line of work. And then we're going to check our answer. Before you're done, you need to plug it back in and check it. And then finally circle once you know it's correct. So I'm going to do these as examples. I'm going to talk through it and go through all those seven steps. Um, and you can just copy my work as we go, and then you'll have a chance to practice your own. So first step, line down the equal sign. I use, uh, I'm trying to get this X right here by itself. So I'm going to find the X. That's what I want to end up with all alone on that side. So I need to do inverse operations to cancel it out. Well, uh, let me get my pen back, sorry. Inverse operations. Well, right here, these are being multiplied together. So the inverse of that would be to divide. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Actually cross out what cancels. Multiplying by 5 and dividing by 5 are inverse operations, so they go away. They just make 1, but I don't need to write the 1x. I just bring down the x. So here's where we bring everything straight down. Negative 45 divided by 5 is negative 9. Now, there's two parts left. I got to check it, and then I got to circle it. So let's check. If I take this negative 9 and I put it back in there, 5 times negative 9, yeah, it does make negative 45. So I checked it, circle it, now I'm done. Next one, y divided by 8 equals negative 7. Okay, draw the line down the equal sign. Here is the variable that I'm trying to get by itself. So I know I'm trying to get y by itself. So I look at what's with it. Right now it's being divided by 8. Inverse operation of dividing by 8 would be to multiply by 8. So I show that off to the side like that. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Actually cross out what cancels. Multiplying by 8 and dividing by 8, drop out. 
bring down my y on a new line. Then negative 7 times 8, bring this straight down, gives me negative 56. Got to check it. So take that negative 56, plug it back in. Negative 56 divided by 8 does give me negative 7. If I look back at the original problem, it works, so I know it's right. Okay, so that was an example with multiplication and division. Let's check out adding and subtracting. Draw the line on the equal sign. All right, here is my variable that I'm trying to get by itself. So find that first. Right now I'm subtracting 13 from that. So the inverse of subtracting 13 or negative 13 would be to add 13. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Cross out what cancels, negative 13 and plus 13, just drop out and make zero. So I bring everything down. And 65 plus 13 is 78. Now I'm not done until I check it. Let's put that 78 back in. 78 minus 13, yep, that does make 65. So I can circle it and I know it's right. All right, last one. 18 equals P plus 3, okay? Still draw the line on the equal sign. Find the variable that you're trying to get by itself. Right now I'm adding 3. Well, I have to use inverse operations to cancel things out. The inverse of plus 3 or adding 3 would be minus 3 or subtract 3. Whatever I do to one side, I have to do to the other side. Actually cross out what cancels. Bring everything down. 18 minus 3 is 15. Now notice I still have the P on the right hand side now. That's fine. It goes straight down. Don't switch which side things are written on. So I got to check that. Uh, let's plug this 15 back in. 15 plus 3 does make 18. So it looks like I'm right. And circle. Okay, here is uh, six examples for you to try. I want you to pause them, try it, follow all the steps. Remember to use inverse operations to cancel things out. Whatever you do to one side, do to the other side. Look back at your notes, okay? I just want to talk about number two for a quick second. In number two, it might be confusing what we're supposed to do here, but think of this as an invisible negative one, and I'm still trying to get that A by itself. So go ahead and try these six, and then we'll come back and go over the answers and check. Okay, let's check just the top row. Here I had to add 5 to both sides, got my answer, plugged it back in, checked it, worked. Number 2, now I had to subtract 13.2 from both sides, actually do the math here, I got an answer, plug it back in, yep, that would work. Next one, I had to add 5, 6 to both sides, so that cancels out, bring my x straight down and rewrite it. Negative 1, 6 plus 5, 6 would leave me with 4, 6, and then I just had to simplify my answer. Down here, I had to multiply by 5 in order to cancel out dividing by 5. So multiply by 5 on both sides, got my answer. Plug it back in, negative 10 divided by 5 is negative 2, good. Here, I have multiplication happening right there. So to cancel it out, I have to divide by negative 1. When you divide by negative 1 on this side, it gives you a positive 24. Negative of 24 is negative 24. I plug it back in and it works. And then the last one, I had to divide by that negative one and a half. When I divide by negative half, one and a half on both sides, I got negative two. So negative one and a half times negative two, yep, does give me positive three. Looks like I'm good. All right, thanks for watching.